originally I was invited by Tom Morton to make a show for the Hayward Project Space. And so it started, trying to be quick, it started as my projects always do, like visiting this sort of place and starting to just generate ideas from that point onwards rather than coming here with any preconception. And I think it was actually through being a Danny Rowan fan and rereading this book that we were obsessed over at art school, What My Religion. And there's lots of reference in there to Cedric Price. And I think I was reading about Cedric Price, the architect, and his Fun Palace proposal in the 60s for this um, huge sort of cultural sort of centre in the, um, in the now Olympic site in, um, in Stratford. And I was reading about that at the same time as trying to make an installation that wasn't an installation and didn't offer all the sort of participatory, interactive sort of um, activities that one associates with an installation. So I wanted to sort of make something that almost critiqued itself. So it was a dealing with the notion of sort of installation art, participatory, or like so called social sculpture, or relational. So, and so I think those ideas came together. There was a sort of collision of like thinking about sort of price and coming out, so thinking about the South Bank Centre and the Festival of Britain in 51 and what that sort of represented and just eventually it sort of just surfaced with lots of other things like wandering around the area at community centres and the Mayor's Office, Southwark and South Bank Hub, all these sort of like few neighbours sort of public access buildings where it's all about fun and interaction and having your say and accessibility and inclusivity and all those things and just trying to sort of start making some sense of this and unravel it. And there's a particular kind of aesthetic that you seem to be interested in, so you yeah. colours and this kind of corporate, social Yeah, exactly, spaces. yeah. Yeah, it's sort of entering into the sort of public and municipal, but you can sort of track it. When you look at this space now, it sort of makes me wince because it looks like a sort of TV set or a retail environment. And from a sort of sculptural perspective, it just looks disgusting, like I'm really trying to overfinish and make things slip. And sort of everything that I'm that I think I'm not in terms of my own sensibility but what I like about this is that it looks like retail or like um, TV but actually everything here comes from these public spaces which are like um, schools, libraries, community centres or what they're now called academies, yeah. sort of learning zones and urban centres or something but so they're the sort of post millennium new labour sort of version but it's there's only actually two elements out of 30 that derive from a retail sort of commercial sort of um, starting point. And which two are they? I mean, did you, um, uh, did you travel around? Yeah, so I did um, a, a sort of road trip around the UK for a couple of weeks and had five, city, five major cities just to make it sort of make it feel a little bit easy. So I had Glasgow, Leeds, London, Sheffield and Birmingham and just whizzed around with five buildings that I'd already identified and just it was like reconnaissance, just taking photos and trying to put together this sort of survey and then from that going back to the studio with thousands of images, like four thousand pictures and then just trying to sort of make sense of it and sort of group things together and then alongside trying to find the most ubiquitous, the most sort of um, relevant to today, the images, I was also had a, a sort of an eye on the fun house as a model just to make the work to tie the show together. So where you have like a ball pit that was, I matched that with its sort of contemporary counterpart which is this bronze nymph that's outside the hospital in Leeds. So instead of having a rotating wooden barrel that a revolving tunnel, I've got the skateboard ramp sort of column from Westfield shopping centre. Or Things like that, so everything was sort of matched up as close as, close as possible. And the, um, the ears from the, the ears from Orange Mobile Shop in Glasgow, mm -hmm. and that sort of comes about. Some of them are sort of quite, you know, removed, but that comes from these, like the huge clown at the entrance where you sort of walk through the mouth. So it's this huge, it's more, you know, like these human forms in the architecture. I was quite surprised when I started reading about this and looking at the colour scheme. Um, as soon as I started reading about these kind of CMYK um, magentas and kind of acid colours, mm. um, how ubiquitous it was uh, everywhere. I just looked around, what's in front of me on the table, but, you know, from adverts to yeah. NHS 
space, yeah. as, as you know, downstairs. But also, you know, art centres are a really big part of that, yeah. like the aesthetic of Tate Modern is quite great. I think Tate Modern with modern. sort of purple and like the public is art centre in West Bromwich that sort of talked about a lot in relation to this work and showed you at the table, which mm -hmm. is magenta, it's known as the magenta fishbowl. Yeah. And all these sort of new initiatives like Nest of the Curve, there's all these new sort of art centres and even the dance schools like the Larvin Centre in Deptford, which we reference in this show, they're all using, I think it used to be like lime green about five years ago this big, and now if you walk down the high street it's all fuchsia and turquoise, which seems sort of so old already, it's like last year, but it's still I'm surprised actually that this is still happening. When yeah. I made the show for Gasworks, it was probably two years ago now that that idea was sort of hatched. And two years later, it's still sort of, I can't, it's unavoidable still that it yeah. becomes part of the vocabulary. It's still here and it has to be dealt with. So, do you kind of see it as like a, like a very visual sign of just a general modernisation, mm. basically, of um, politics, culture, commerce, experience—is mm -hmm. that um, is, is that part of it? Or? Yeah, definitely. I think that that sort of came later. I remember first of all as a sort of art student, you're just going around getting excited about something that looks like something else, and you're yeah. taking pictures of it. And then I think over the years you start sort of looking at the social and political sort of implications or reasons for. It. And I think that's definitely become like there's. Sort of various books I'm reading in preparation for Gasworks, and that's the sort of underlying theme is sort of, you know, after in sort of late capitalism and globalization, like there is this homogeneity within sort of material culture yeah. and design. It's a sort of discussion. I was thinking that if we were under a different government and we had less sort of zingy, interactive sort of tendencies within architecture, whatever was whatever was there would still be critiquing. I think it's our job to unpack it and unravel it and, and criticise it. Yeah. So I don't, and I think it's quite important to sort of be quite impartial when you're doing it. So you're literally just stating the facts, this is what's going on. Yeah. And then you start having conversations like this about whether or not this is a, a good solution to the problem or whether perhaps it needs to be sort of, you know, reconsidered or something. I don't know, but I think it's the conversations obviously that are more important. Yeah. So I think we are keeping it. And I've been mentioning it and, and contributing towards it by yeah. having these conversations.